Hey guys, it's Brooke from The Vintage Garter. Welcome back to my channel and happy Labor Day, although I have no idea when this video is gonna get posted. So today is going to be cleanup day in the parterre garden. Everything has grown very well. It's out of control, but it's at the, we're at the end of the season and between the scorching weather, some of the plants are not looking too good. And so I'm gonna start cutting things out just to make everything look a lot neater. Uh, so first off, um, when I'm cleaning, I'm going to be planting some things and I'm going to start with the pink section. So let me show you what I've got for the pink section. Well, the irises and I'll show you the rest of the plants outside. Okay, so this is a bearded iris. It's called Concertina. I do think I had one at my last house. Um, it does. It's it's like pink. It does have some like purplish like little beards. This is reblooming. So it blooms late spring. You cut it back and then it blooms again late summer, early fall. So I have six of those. I'm gonna put three in each pink section. And then to fill it in, I've got some pink uh, mixed bearded irises. Um, it's just a mix. I have no idea what this is gonna look like. Hopefully uh, the tag is correct and they are actually pink because things are frequently mislabeled. And um, this doesn't appear to be, I think this is just a spring bloom, and that's fine. So uh, the concertina, when I, I looked it up, it is an heirloom type bearded iris. So that always makes me excited because I do like to get heirloom um, type flowers. Um, so when I plant my bearded irises, I, I think I mentioned in an earlier video, I only I plant it to the, um, the bottom of the fan. I don't bury it all the way. I leave some green stuff sticking above the top. Um, so that's for the pink section. And I'm going to go out and show you the garden and then I'm going to show you the plants I have to go in. Okay guys, before I go outside, I just wanted to show you, I am buying plant tags. Because uh, let's face it, I have a lot of varieties. Uh, this year I've been doing a good job of remembering it, but the more varieties I have in the future, I'm not going to remember um, what's what. And so um, you, I got these, they're copper, I got them from Amazon, pretty cheap. Uh, they came with a permanent marker. And so I'm just going to be putting these marking, just one plant, I'm not going to mark literally every plant, but just, you know, one variety, just mark it. So that way, um, it'll be easy to see what I have. Because although I do label stuff for Instagram, <coughs> Instagram, um, my Instagram is getting longer and longer and longer and it's only going to get um, worse as time goes on. It's going to be impossible for me to find, um, to find in plants. And not to mention some of the things, some of the plants I find that you, you end up finding similar plants and it's kind of hard to tell what is what. Not to mention, you know, your soil chemistry changes the color. So this will just be a lot easier. So now let's go outside. Okay guys, welcome to the wild. <laughs> Uh, so once I finish doing weeding this week, I'm going to get work on this section right here. Um, I'm going to be planting vegetables over here. So uh, this is the last section of the parterre garden and I'm very happy. Okay guys, so let's just take a quick walk through here. Um, these are pink zinnias. Uh, next year, I'm going to have, I got to get a lot of plant supports for next year. I got to figure out something different. Um, because of the way the sun goes, you know, it shades once it gets to a certain point by the house. That's why they're leaning over because phototropism. But they're leaning into the bed. Now, part of that is because when I planted these, there were plants behind them that were really, really full. And so the front of the bed was where I had the space. Uh, so next year, um, I'm going to do better. I'm just going to dive in there and put some stuff in. Uh, but today when I plant, I'm going to be planting in the back section of the bed because that's what's kind of already spent uh, but as you can see the zinnias are leaning into the bed um it's i'm glad i went with a three foot uh, walkway not that it's doing me much good because i have to kind of like think thin uh, but as you can see there's a lot of grass and that sort of thing in here so i'm going to be yanking all of that um, I do have some powdery mildew, so I'm going to be spraying. I have orchard spray and I've got neem oil. And then, so the red section is looking a little tamer, especially once I pulled out the poppies. Um, I'm going to be cutting all the um, heads off the gladiolas. Quite frankly, I may do what I did with the poppies, which is like pull them together and like tie them off just to, you know, hopefully make it look a little bit better. Um, the sunflowers are spent. Um, I don't even know if there are any seed heads in here. 
I think they've all fallen out or the birds have eaten them. So next year should be interesting. Very interesting. So uh, the nasturtium, I'm glad I cut them back earlier because they're shorter, a little stockier, but at least they're not growing over the bed. Um, once again, there's some, you know, grass and everything. So I'll be doing some sprucing up in here. I do have a mum back there that's in a pot that I need to get into the ground. Um, and this right here, okay, so this is the orange section. Yeah. Um, yeah. So today what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be pulling some of the four crops, the ones that are at the front. Um, I'm just going to cut, cut back uh, because, I mean, literally, y'all, I can't even walk on this path. Uh, so <laughs> uh, next year, I will plant four o'clocks. I'll make, I'll, um, I won't put as many in. I, can, I have other spaces. I can put some of them uh, rather than jam everything in this one bed. Come on, Bumpy. Raise your paw. So I'm out with the dog who is holding me up here. And so, uh, these are calendula. I'm just going to, these right here, like the ones that are dead, dead, I'm just gonna pull. Uh, some of them I probably can give a hard prune back. Um, but, yeah, I'm just gonna get them out. Um, now, some of the purple, there are dahlias back here. I'm not really sure, those are supposed to be orange. Uh, these right here, these purplish things, those are actually the asters. Now, the weirdest thing about those asters is that when they fade, they actually fade to a lovely peach color. So I don't know why they start off purple, but that's just kind of the way it is. So uh, once again, in here, I'm just cutting all this back. I do have some uh, snapdragons in there. Uh, they look like they're gonna bloom again. And then this is the yellow section. Uh, some of the sunflower have fallen over and with the straw flower, I'm just gonna start uh, pulling some of these, a lot of these. Uh, I'm gonna pull the sunflower out, then I'm gonna weed it and that sort of thing. So I've got my work cut out for me. Um, you know, guys, overall, I'm, I'm very pleased with how the garden uh, did this year. I was not expecting such a, uh, a huge show. Uh, so yeah, so I'm just gonna be cleaning out in here. Um, I'm gonna cut off all the blooms for the sunflower and just take it down because I can't anymore. Uh, this is the green with pink section. I'm gonna cut some of the, the zinnias off to give them so I can have some flowers and that sort of thing. I got some weeding in here to do, obviously. Uh, this section actually doesn't look too bad. I have a little bit to do, but it won't be too bad. This this is the be this is probably the tightest section right here. And then over here, this is the purple section. Um, I'm gonna cut the zinnias back. Actually, I'm gonna cut them back pretty hard. I did not think the zinnias were gonna get this tall. Uh, these zinnias are almost as tall as I am, and I'm five foot four. So they're le heavily laden with blooms, and you know, if I could figure out a way to stake them, you know, I would stake some of them and that sort of thing. So yeah. So and like I said, this week this is what I'm doing. So this mess is gonna be done with. Oh, when I finish the yellow section, these are intersectional peonies, they're Bardicella. I'm gonna take them out of the pots and start putting them in there. I have three more that my mom are sent, is sending me, and then that section will be done. Uh, this is the one memorial garden for my paternal grandmother. Uh, these rosemary have gotten really big. I didn't, usually they're pretty slow growing, but um, I can, I'm gonna leave them. Next spring, I'll shear them, start shearing them into a hedge formation um, and this is I don't even know what I'm gonna call this bed uh, but I've got some uh, Salome peony display uh, irises right here right there and right there I have some zinnias in there that are not doing so good I've got some bombs um, this is the uh, this is the um, memorial garden for my maternal grandmother I have to do a section on that to tell you what's in here 
Uh, it, it has definitely done, it's done phenomenal. It, it had a really slow start, uh, but it's definitely hit its stride now. Um, so, yeah. I'm actually, I really, really liked how this bed turned out. Uh, this is the bed for my paternal grandfather. This one is, the, I'm going to have to rework this one. This, um, for example, this dahlia, I'm going to take out. I'm going to move it to the other green section over there. And I've added some stuff to this bed, but it seems to be, it's not taking off very well. Um, I'm not sure what it, I'm not really sure why. Uh, but I'm going to cut some of these dahlias back. And yeah, I'm definitely going to rework this bed for next year. I need some best a better support system and that sort of thing. Uh, here is the um, bed for my maternal grandpa. You know, for whatever reason, it's like the grandpa flower beds didn't do so well, and the grandma's the flower beds did great. Uh, so this once again is going to be an area I'm going to rework. I'm going to add. I think I'm going to get those upside down um, tomato cages to support the dahlias, to, to give this more structure and that sort of thing. Um, in general, I need to figure out, I'm definitely gonna get plant hoops so that the plants still fall into the walkways because that's a, a big thing this year. So um, let me show you the plants I'm gonna put in the pink section because that's the first section I'm gonna tackle today. guys I just wanted you to look at this do you see this this is a sweet pea you know usually these fizzle out and die I don't know why this one down here and the one over there they're coming back and they're starting to bloom um so if you guys have grown sweet pea in the past did you guys have that happen because I was not aware that they would rebloom okay guys so here's some of the plants that are going the pink section uh, first off, I got this pretty, it's called Pretty Parasols Echinacea. I got it from Ryland Garland. Um, this is like the first like pure, like actual pink echinacea that I've seen. So this one uh, is hardy from zones four to nine. Its mature height is, can be 40 inches. That's what I'm counting on because everything in my garden gets larger. And so, yeah, I'm, I have four of them. So I'll put two in each section. And then over here, I have some Japanese anemone, which I'm totally getting into, especially because I realize they're fall blooming. And let's see. So this one is called September Charm. Uh, this is another one that I got from Ryland Garland and Garden, excuse me. And it's hardy from zone six to nine. It gets 36 inches high. And so I'm gonna put, um, I'm gonna put two of these in one section and that's because I'm going, I have another Japanese anemone that I'm going to move. So let me show you that one. Okay guys, so here's the uh, the Japanese um, anemone I'm gonna mo move. This one is called um, Robustima and it it's hardy from zone three to nine and it gets, let's see, this one gets 48 inches tall. So I think this is a little too much sun for it because it hasn't really thrived. So I have one on this side and I've got one on the other side of the driveway. So I'm gonna dig them out and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put them in the pink section because they do like some partial shade. They can handle full sun if the watering is right. And for some strange reason, I don't think the watering here, it's okay. It's just, but I think it'll be happier in the pink section because that section gets, um, get sun so yeah so uh let's just look at take a minute to appreciate my perennial border here it's starting to fill in I got some more stuff to add yeah I do I truly do and um yeah oh so all these hydrangeas that you see this is going to be for the front hedge but I'll do another segment on that okay guys so that's the plan for today so I'm not necessarily going to set up the uh the I'm not gonna set up the camera because it's just too much. Uh, but yeah, I'll come. I'll check in periodically during the day so you guys can see how I'm coming along. Okay, guys, let me show you what I've done. So as you can see, in here is all emptied out. I cut back all the hollyhocks because they were looking kind of bad. Um, there are the little grass-looking things are actually carnations, and 
I think those are biennial, and I think next year they're gonna is when they'll start putting on a show. I did pull as much grass as I could. Uh, this section I did not mulch as well as the other sections because the plants were a lot tinier, so I was scared to bury them. Uh, but I have a lot of um, perennials in here, so next year I'll be heavily mulching it, so it should do better in terms of weeds. Um, as you can see, I took out all the sunflower down here. The red section didn't have as much in terms of weeds, but I got the stuff out. Um, I clipped off the, oh, I missed one right there, but I clipped off all the dead heads of the gladiolas and I started into the orange section. Um, I'm sure you can see there's like a chunk missing at the beginning. Uh, so I'm just going to cut all that back. I'm going to thin it in the center uh, because the just to make sure I need a little bit more airflow especially with all the rain that we've been having there's some things I'm definitely going to change for next year you probably can't tell in the pink section but I could when I was actually in here it was very moist down at the root uh, this section does get a, a more shade than for example the red section does uh, so I think what I'm going to do for next year is that I'm going to put pink on its own drip system now the pink section stops right, I don't even know where the pink section stops. Oh, down here. So what I'm gonna do, and I think the end of the, uh, it's somewhere in here, I'll have to find it when everything dies back. But I'll run, I'll put that on its own drip because quite frankly, I probably could only, I could probably get away with only um, watering this once every four days, I think. Um, so I'll just run it down to this particular spigot. I've got a four-way splitter, so I can um, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, so that is what I've pulled this far. And so I'm going to get my big trash can and put that in there. Oh, uh, you know what? Funny thing. I was in here, and I was getting ready to cut this hollyhock back. And this is the maroon one. Dude, it's blooming. Okay, if you guys don't know anything about hollyhocks, hollyhocks do not bloom. Well, the big ones, anyway. Uh, the Alicia rosia, I think that's the scientific name for them. They don't bloom their first year, so I was absolutely flabbergasted. As a matter of fact, it's getting ready to bloom. So I don't know what on earth happened with that particular one, but I'm not going to say no to some blooms. Okay, guys, so... I took a break from gardening, mostly because I remembered that I actually had to do some work today. I uh, had some reports due. I'm in the process of getting this done, but... Oh, what happened to that Xenia? Anyway, my eyes are starting to glaze over. Oh, never mind. I remember what happened to that Xenia. <laughs> I ran it over with the, uh, the uh, cart. So anyway, let me show you the next segment that I got done. I got to get my leaf blower up and blow that the path off and as you can see I took out a lot a lot as a matter of fact I filled two big trash cans with that trash can over there filled that one with all the deletrous from there um, this is from the yellow section as you can see I whacked it down a lot I still have a little bit more to go. No chance to plant anything today. It was just mostly taking everything down. So I have to say, like I feel very exposed and naked right now because the sunflowers did provide a lot of screening, and so like everybody can see me. Okay, guys. So that's it for this video. I'm gonna go back inside, and like I said, I got some work to finish. You know. And I may come out here a little later, do a couple more things, a couple more things. You know, I'm, I'm really tempted with this dahlia right here to just kind of like take it down by half just to see what happens. I really am. <laughs> Xenia is so pretty. Alright, see you guys in a couple hours.